Hello, hello. Good morning and welcome to our panel today, the business side of entertainment. My name is Shari and I'm the director of operations for Pipelines. And Pipelines is a mobile app that connects um, underrepresented talent directly to job and training opportunities across tech, entertainment, and creative industries. So we'll put that information in the chat. You should definitely download the app, check it out, and start connecting to these wonderful training and job opportunities across these three wonderful industries. Um, before we dive in, I do want to kick it over to Dina Ibrahim, who's a part of the Cal California State University Entertainment Alliance, to tell you a little bit about what they do and how you can get more involved in the future. Take it away, Dina. Thank you so much, Shari, and thank you to all of our panelists uh, for taking the time to be here today. The CSU Entertainment Alliance, uh, please follow us on social at the CSUEA. There are going to be a bunch of links in the chat. And our website is at csuentertainment.com. What we want to do is connect y'all to opportunities in the industry. Um, we have a ton of career resources on our website. Um, there are lots of videos that, of panels that we produce uh, just like this one. Uh, and we want to help you make meaningful connections in the entertainment industry because as everybody who works in it will tell you, it really is about who you know. So we want to try to help you build that network. We want to connect you to entry level opportunities, whether it's internships um, or maybe apprenticeships. Uh, paid stuff after you graduate. We have a lot of exciting programs going on, including housing grants. And if you're part of like a student group and you're trying to bring in a speaker uh, to uh, talk to students, let us know. We can also help with that as well. So please visit csuentertainment.com. We're here to help you uh, get your foot in the door and get started with your careers. Thank you so much, Gina. And just very briefly, um, why we do these sessions, I see some familiar names and faces from our previous sessions. This has been something that we kicked off last year as a bi-weekly series to get talent like you to, to understand the many different career paths available to you across entertainment and uh, creative industries. And as we know, um, which is great, you know, we live in California, most of us, and it's very film, production, TV, film. These are all great um, career paths and we, we love them. We love to see it, right? But what there isn't enough conversation resources and education around is the business side. There actually is a whole lucrative business side of entertainment and we want you to understand what those roles entail and how you can begin to prepare for a career in entertainment. So I'll let the, the panelists introduce themselves in a moment, but I just wanna go over some quick house rules. Um, you are more than welcome for us to see your beautiful faces on video, that's totally fine, but please make sure that your camera, I mean, your, I'm sorry, your um, audio is muted the entire session. Um, at the end, we will allow for time for Q&A. So this is actually a hybrid event where we'll do a, a, a brief discussion about the panelists' roles in this industry. And then we wanna allow most of the time today for you to ask the panelists direct questions um, during this session. And how that will work is you're gonna DM me directly with your question and I will ask it for you. And I'll let you know when we open the floor for questions. But in the meantime, please keep your audio on mute um, so we can be respectful of the panelists' time and energy. So without further ado, let's meet our panelists. So we'll start with Jerome. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Glad I get to kick things off. Uh, Shari, thank you for the uh, introduction here. Uh, Jerome Jackson, principal attorney at uh, Extraordinary Insights, uh, was a Miami-based entertainment and technology law firm. Uh, I primarily work talent side, uh, doing transactional documents and things that get get everyone's business, uh, I guess, formed and, and operating correctly. So I do operating agreements, partnership agreements, uh, any words that, that get put on paper to make two people or two entities work together, that's what I do. Um, and it spans music, film, TV, sports, and a little bit of media. Um, and as everybody will say these days, you know, there's a huge technology piece that, that goes with everyone that works in, in this business nowadays. So glad to be here and glad to talk to everybody. Thank you so much, Jerome. Alicia. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I, uh, okay, good. Uh, I work in um, business affairs at, at Pretty Bird, and they are a company that does a bit of like all, all types of content. Like there's TV, there's film, there's scripted, and there's, uh, 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 and there, and there is, uh, 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 and there is unscripted, excuse me. And because that, and because that's such a broad range of content. I handle a bit of all things, as in I do contracts, I work on stuff that, that is with like the, uh, the IP. I make sure that the, that the deal 
it gets done and, and if there is an it, it and if there is an it, it if there is an it, it oh my gosh if there is an issue that goes from like an issue of like of covid or or is this uh actor on set um okay to have on this type of t-shirt i step in to answer all of the, those questions so like a bit of everything but all stuff with like the deal and contracts thank you so much alicia and last but not least elon Thank you so much for inviting me. I mean, I, I, it's, a, it's an honor and pleasure to, to support the program and, and give all of, all of the students at CSU um, an insight into uh, the life uh, that we all lead in the entertainment industry among the three uh, participants. I am a partner at Green, Hass & Jenks, which is actually an accounting firm. It sounds like a law firm, but it is an accounting firm. And I lead the profit participation group within our firm. Uh, our firm is... Uh, one of the top 20 firms here in Los Angeles, uh, which is the entertainment capital of the world still. And um, what I do for a living uh, is oversee audits across the industry to make sure that the profits are shared with the talent, with production companies and between studios. So we do in terms of scale, anywhere from 100 to 150 audits at any given moment in time uh, and we've been doing this for probably 40 to 50 years. And I'm a uh, third generation uh, leader of this group. Uh, looking forward to our discussion today. Thank you so much. And I, I really just want to take it a step further because I want to have the assumption that maybe people have very little knowledge of this side of entertainment, right? So if we could just go panelist by panelist, you know, Jerome, you're coming from the entertainment law perspective, Alicia is coming from the business affairs perspective, Elon, even though you do many, a plethora of things, um, we're, we're choosing to focus on the accounting um, or the financial part of entertainment. So that being said, Jerome, what I know this is a vague question, but what is entertainment law? Why is it so important when we talk about the, the media we consume or the film or TV that we watch? Like, how does that play a part? Like jobs or set or productions? Like, how does that play a part so they understand very simply what entertainment law actually entails? If you can, condense it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, that's disrespectful. Like, how, how do I have to explain how all of this works together? But- the pressure. Uh, yeah, but entertainment is a business just like every other industry, right? And so within that business, there are just players. There are people who have, have different roles that contribute different things to produce a product or, you know, as an ongoing thing, you know, as a service. Um, and so whether you're talent that comes in and, and razzles and dazzles us uh, with the camera in your face, or if you're a crew that ha is part of, you know, holding the cameras, editing the work once it's done, the boomstick operators that, that make sure that the sound is working, um, all the way up to, you know, Elysia, who will, you know, who will put the terms to the deal to ensure that everyone makes sure that they can uh, get paid properly and that their rights have been transferred. Um, so there's, there's just a, a lot that goes into, I guess, the, the, the product that we watch or listen to in entertainment. And that's kind of how my job fits into this whole thing, is I put together the terms that everyone will work on, right? So Usually in, on union sets, there's the union that does a lot of the uh, negotiating for, you know, what everyone's going to get paid, but making sure that there's enough, making sure that everyone is staffed, that everyone is, is uh, bound legally to, uh, pro to provide their services for the set amount of time or, or uh, days that are necessary on set or whatever it is. Uh, that's kind of where my job is. I tell, I make sure that everything that we, that we are all on the same page, right? And that's kind of how you should think of the entertainment lawyer in the situation is ensuring that we're all on the same page, that when things, you know, when two weeks from now, when we've forgotten what we all said about it, the lawyer was there and made sure that, oh, okay, no, 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 you have to be here six hours today, not five and a half, not three, right? And so it's making sure that everyone is, is operating under the same understanding to get the product that we want done. Yes. And before we move on really quick, and I'll have the other two panelists answer the second part too. Um, when we talk about skills, education, and training, can you very briefly walk us through your, your process of education? Like what skills or training or education did you need leading up to this point? So, so the students and attendant can understand um, if they're on the right path or what should they be considering as they begin to prepare for a career in entertainment law. So just walk us through like your education, your tra any training that you've had that led you to this point. Okay. Um, you know, my, my undergrad, if you're talking about undergrad, you know, I did science, technology, and society as a degree. Right. And so it's 
a vast uh, study of, of how technology changes society. Does that specifically relate to what I do today? Maybe, maybe not. But so, so the point is that I, I think the point of all education at all schools is to, to learn how you learn, right? Figure out how you can get new information inside of your head. So I think that's the whole point of, of what you're trying to do. And so whether you're learning economics, which plays a part in every business, whether you're learning uh, political science to understand, you know, how the voting, you know, saying you'll come in contact with this when it comes to the board of directors uh, voting on 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 a budget, you know, what I'm saying for for a talent slate that that comes up later. You know, there's there's just so many parts of business that that you can come across that I can't tell you that you need to do entertainment specific classes for this or not because you know I've I've taken a non traditional route and I've done technology and society first and then I've built that into an entertainment practice. Now I will say once I got to law school, I did narrow down. And so once I did my three years in law school, my second and third year were primarily focused, the classes that I took on business corporations, on intellectual property, not just from, well, intellectual property, I did startup law, um, and then some specific film and music uh, short courses. So at some point, you do need to know this information and learn you know, the, the words and lingo that goes on in the business. If you're gonna do it, I think it's a good way, you know, to 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 I guess get started in understanding how legal concepts apply, and then applying those to to uh, an area that you that you care about. Uh, but aside from that, you know, it's it's just best to learn things that you care about, and then make relationships, right? Because knowing people, you know, will, is is the big part of this. If they think you're good at learning stuff or just cool to be around, then you can find yourself in places that that will give you opportunities. Yes, absolutely. That was a nugget. Yes. <laughs> um, Alicia, so let's talk about um, Pretty Bird. If you don't know what Pretty Bird is, what, what is Pretty Bird? Um, what do you do as business affairs at Pretty Bird? And what was your, um, your education process like? Yeah, absolutely. Happy to address um, all of that, even though I think that I think that Jerome has brought up like outstanding points. Um, I actually had a bit of uh, the opposite experience as far as school where I actually did go to a college where I studied um, TV and film at NYU because I knew I wanted to understand the business part of it. So the reason why for undergrad, I chose to more so study like the art and the culture of film is because it very much is like a club. Like a project is very different from any other type of like, of like type, like of, of like, type of like, I guess like a project because there are tons of parts, there are tons of people, there are tons of like, of like unions and guilds and stuff. So, so like, I feel like for, for me in college because I am from Texas, I was like, like, what is this the thing? After that, as I was in law school, I did kind of hone in more on like the IP and the, uh, and the more of the law, a, 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 the law a, a aspect of being in, uh, in MTV and film, but because I had that broad type of experience, I did come to terms with the fact that it is totally who you know. So totally like, don't be afraid to get coffees and network uh, um, because both in college and in law school, I got coffees with with like with like all people. If I saw a, a teacher who was awesome, I asked them to have a coffee. I would stalk people online and be like, oh, hello, I'd love to, to have coffee. Just because you don't know what you don't know, know and you don't know who could help you. I mean, like a couple of my best jobs have come from me being like, oh, you had a spin class with a friend of mine, you work for this uncool company. Like, 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 how are you and how did you get here? And I know that like a lot of um, um, attorneys have kind of like a bad rap, but but I feel like the attorneys in, in, in entertainment are the like best ones. So they're always kind and happy to talk to, to, to people. And so after I did all that, after I got out of law school, I just was trying to get a job that like touch upon all of my exposure. And because I had a broad range of, of experience, I did like, I did pursue a job in business and, and uh, legal, legal, legal affairs at a company that touched on a ton of stuff, which, which is how I got to, to, to um, T bird. So this company is totally a production company that does that just makes all content. Like 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 we work with brands as big as 
Nadette, uh, we work with brands as big as Netflix and also with brands that are smaller and new and, and, and hungry. And the way that we work is that once we have a strong project with a very strong art, we look at how we can go and and make the content, but but like in the way that best takes care of us and uh, the client. And that is one thing I wanted to, to um, bring up. Being in business and legal affairs is a broad thing, but it gets more honed in when you know what side you're on. Like there's like the client side and the side of like who is paying for it and the side of who is the main party who has at, who is at, who is at risk for the project. And I feel like being at being in business and legal affairs, you you can be on each side per per a, a project. But once you know who you're with, like like if you're the client or if you're the agency, that totally um, structures how you approach the actual um, deal. Just because, like you know, like just as example, if you're on the uh, client side, you want to make sure that 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 the client is taken care of, that they're allowed to do what they have to do and get and get in and get out they're paid and it's all cool well if you're on the side of like the aid gen c you want to have a deal that is strict enough to where you make sure that all of the needs of the project are met but not you know i'm so strict that it scares away the the um the the client so even though it is kind of like a broad type of a field to get into like it's also kind of just like like a human type of of big 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 oh my god human type of business. You need to know that everyone is a person trying to get a project done and take care of it in the best a best a best type of way to ensure that it's a good project. So that's just like a thing that I feel like I totally agree that it doesn't really like matter what you study in college, but you definitely want to make sure that you do take care of the human aspect of things. That was great. Thank you, Alicia. Of course. Yes, snaps, Jerome. I, I second that. <laughs> and Elon? Yeah, so, so let me first share with you all how I fit into the bigger picture. And I think that may be the, the, the easiest thing to try and figure this out. Um, um, and, and part of it is because there's really not many people who do what I do, and it's, it's somewhat um, confusing. So um, typically, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to refer to my um, my co-panelists for a moment. Typically, the way we get involved is if Jerome makes a deal on behalf of a famous actor, let's just use that as an example, Keanu Reeves. And Keanu is going to be playing, obviously, uh, a role uh, in Matrix 4, which is coming up, I think, later this year. Um, and, and again, this is just hypothetical. I don't know what the deal is, but uh, Jerome is able to negotiate um, that Keanu is going to get uh, probably 5% of the net profits of the film in addition to a fixed comp. And what that means is uh, once all the revenues come in uh, to the studio, uh, whether it's theatrical receipts and streaming revenues and everything else, and deduct their expenses and other fees, whatever is left, you know, Keanu is going to get a 5% share. What will happen is Jerome may be reaching out to me and say, in the contract, this, this deal that I made, there is an audit provision and I'd like you to exercise that provision. I'd like you to go in and check the books and records of the studio, in this case will be Warner Brothers, to see if um, his client received a fair share of the net profit. So really what we're doing is we're verifying that um, the, the famous actor in this case, this, this hypothetical, got his fair share. Now, multiply that by, you know, all the different studios and all the different distributors here and around the world. We work uh, literally across the world right now, virtually. Um, that's what we do. And, and so we basically verify uh, and perform forensic accounting um, services on behalf of, of the talent. In some cases, in, in other cases, we work on behalf of production companies that have a deal with a studio and they, they split the profits. Our job is to verify all of that. Now, the second part of your question is what does it really take? Now, I, I, it, it's, it's somewhat uh, a challenging question, just like the, the way Jerome answered. It's, it's, it's a, the, the, what we do for a living is we have to apply all of our senses and all of our knowledge to uh, basically go through um, a, a shoebox full, full of documents, if I'm just kind of using it, just as an example, and trying to find within that 
issues. Uh, so the forensic skill is, is, is hard to train. It really comes from curiosity. So you have to have that curiosity, that the interest of looking for, in a way, a needle in a haystack. But there's a bunch of needles you're going to be able to find. But ultimately, if you go back to the skill set, um, obviously the baseline is accounting. Where I graduated from, uh, from Cal State Northridge, I, I was an accounting major at the time. But then I thought, what else do I really need? Definitely uh, business law is important because we do do a lot of contract related work. We have to read and interpret the contract. Uh, then uh, more recently, we've hired people with mathematics focus. So really knowledge of um, how to work data sets and, and analyze the data and, and looking for anomalies and, and using pivot tables and all kinds of data analysis, I think is critical um, because more and more of the data that we're getting is coming in data dumps of numbers and you're trying to make sense of them. And that requires feeling comfortable and, and knowing how to work through and analyze information. So I would say a good knowledge of mathematics is also critical because it does play into forensic accounting. I love it. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm switching gears. I'm switching gears a little bit because um, on each of these panels or sessions that I do, what I'm finding is a lot of um, aspiring talent. We don't ever talk about the work cultures, right? Because I think a lot of people just think every entertainment company or every you know creative company is the same, but they're actually very, very, very different. And I think as we start to think about what environments we thrive in in our career, we have to be mindful and do our due diligence about what kind of work cultures we want to work in, right? Like some are more corporate than others. Um, so can we just talk about that? Like obviously pre-COVID, but just talking about the work culture of Extraordinary Insights of GHJ of Pretty Bird. Um, is it small? Is it a large company? Is it global? Is it fast paced, slow paced? Just talk a little bit about the work culture. So as you know, the ones in attendance can start to think about what type of environments they actually want to work in every day. Can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, so at least with me, like I, I keep it, I keep it laid back. Like I, I've always hated uh, the rigidity of, of, you know, like formal law, law, law firms. And, and I, you know, I worked in corporate law or uh, I worked in uh, corporate America for, I guess, two years. I worked for a software company um, out in California when, when I first graduated from school. And so they started me on this. I don't care about the dress code. I care about your work product, like whole mindset. Right. So I, so, you know, working with me, like you'll, I'll, I'll never have anything to say unless, you know, your presentation is just crazy about what you show up look, looking like. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, and obviously there's there's rules to that, right? Like if we have a meeting or something, then then presentation is a little bit more important, like an in-person or uh, Zoom or what have you. So, you know, but I, I generally try to keep it lax um, and, and focus on the work product. Uh, but I do like, I, I, I love curiosity, you know, um, here, you know, if, if you are interested in, in, you know, working on on a certain type of project, I absolutely foster that here, you know, and so if there's there's deals that that we have that, you know, we can funnel out to folks and say, you know, get you some experience doing this, uh, then then absolutely, you know, and because it's because I when when I first started my law career, um, I was working at a, at a law firm and and I didn't feel like they fostered that enough. Right. I wanted I wanted my hand hands dirty and, and all kinds of different things so that I could figure out, you know, what I wanted to do, what I was good at, how, you know, what it takes to be good at things. Um, and then, you know, getting siloed or pigeonholed, you know, it, 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 it's a little frustrating. And so, you know, that's why I kind of work the opposite way. And I say, look, if you're hungry, like I have things that I know I need you to do, you know, and, 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 and that's going to take precedent. But if there's, you know, if you're hungry to, to you know, ha tackle a music business project, you know, if you want to do a distribution deal, if you want, you know, to, to see if you can, you know, add in a, a brand advertising for, you know, to advertisement for one of, you know, the talent that I represent, or if you want to get production companies, you know, connected with, uh, you know, somebody that, they, they're, that they're not connected to already, you know, and, and add value as a broker or a broker a finder. But, uh, you know, if there's, if there are things that you want to do, I absolutely foster that, you know, and so I, I try to keep it loose and I try to keep it, you know, positive and, and lax um, because realistically, you do want people that are comfortable with where they are with in their own skin so that they can thrive, especially from the fact that as we keep saying, all the panelists keep saying, this is a people business. And so, you know, people who are frustrated and angry or irritated or not happy or whatever, aren't fun to be around. They're not fun to have emails back and forth with or phone conversations or coffees with, 
And so then that, that starts to mess with the business. So, so long as you're cool and you're relaxed and you're happy and getting stuff done, then that, that's, that's kind of culture that we have around here. Yeah, and just to add to all of that, you definitely want to have, I guess, a culture that's a combination of people who are passionate and care about what um, that they do, as in they're there to actually do, you know, you know, a ton of good work that's also a lot of fun. And also people who want to take that extra step to go and train people, because I also have been in spaces where you're excited to have a new job. You're like, oh, this is such a, a cool, cool space, but you're just kind of there to like push paper. Like there's no one there who's really trying to sit down and train you and tell you, hey, actually do it this way. Actually, this is, you know, this standard and how come. Um, uh, before I started um, being at T.T. Bird, I actually worked at the Walt uh, Disney Company, which was totally awesome. You know, you get like a um, free, 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 a, um, free pass to the, to the park. So, you know, a, a, a small pro, but it is a big type of company, which was totally cool, but also had the cons of training because if you're in a space with like hundreds and hundreds of people, it's like you do go and learn a lot, but it's hard to get anything that is more hands on. So in those instances, you almost want to ask yourself, what do I want? Like, what type of training do I want at the start of my career? Because there are tons of attorneys who work for, you know, like a long time and towards the end, they just want to have a corporate job that is like that is standard and cool. But if you're hungry, you kind of want to go to a smaller company that or not just smaller, but a company that is more eager to train. And, that, and that's actually how, how I changed jobs and got at Pretty Bird. And that culture is honestly, it's a small company with a huge feel. Like, again, we have huge partners, huge, uh, huge, I guess like, it's not huge, but like, uh, um, like, um, um, like, I guess I'll say like, it's very like, am, bit, bit, am, bit, bit, am, bit, 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 the work that we put out. So each project has, you know, has, you know, a ton of issues and, and aspects that even though I have learned a ton in my career, I'm constantly having to ask my colleagues, is this correct? How do we go and do, do this? And to, to, and to me, that's fun. And what's so great is that like everyone is asking each other. So, so it's a space where it's, you know, hectic and that fast pace, but everyone is very passionate about the work that we put out and very, very like happy and eager to help people. And so, and also people who want to be helped, you know, like there are some people where if you tell them, hey, actually it's this way, they get, you know, kind of upset because they thought that how they had done this was like the, the perfect type of way. What you want is a culture where people are very happy to be helped, if that is clear. So yeah, it's definitely like that, that type of space. So to add, to add to Alicia's um, comments, um, 2020 was a challenging year for us. Um, we actually brought in for the first time in the history of our group, and it's about 20 of us within the firm, um, two new associates coming straight out of college. And you ask yourself, how do you train? How do you integrate them? How do you get them into the culture, get the feel of the culture when they're working out of their home? Um, and, and I think that's been a, that's been a challenge. Uh, but as we look back uh, at the end of the day, he was successful. And I think that um, the reason as I look back in, 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 is that we've embraced the two new associates and just reflects who we are uh, and using uh, technology to its fullest, uh, whether it's Zoom and Teams, which is another way of uh, connecting and many, many other ways uh, such as heavy training uh, and uh, even allowing them to spend a day observing one of the seniors that they work with, literally you just watch them throughout the day and, and basically hop from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting, just observing their seniors and having all kinds of fun events. We had um, a magician, we had um, all kinds of activities. We, we even watched a goat somewhere. Um, it was like the, the thing to do right when COVID hit, we had literally watched a goat in a park uh, for Zoom and uh, learn about the goat and, and the farm. But anyway, all these different things to bring us together. Um, and I think that really is a reflection of who we are as a group. We really care for for each other. And as, as we look back, uh, this is probably the, the, the most cohesive team we've had in many, many years, um, particularly because we were going through this crisis together and moved from, this is the big change, moving away from working together in an audit room at a studio lot to working remotely from home or now, now that we've opened the office, some of us going to the office, 
but we are dispersed. But I think the systems uh, that we're utilizing are bringing us back together. So as I look at the culture, I think um, as we look at the people that we bring in, uh, and I mentioned earlier, curiosity is critical. Uh, passion, I think, Alicia, you mentioned that passion for what you do. And it's not so much the entertainment industry, but enjoying doing forensic work is critical. I think that passion uh, is coming through um, in those Zoom uh, discussions. Um, but, and I, I'm gonna reflect back on the most important thing about how we operate. We, we really more operate like engineers where uh, we have to brainstorm quite a bit and everybody's opinion matters. So when you come in as an associate, it doesn't mean that you're doing repetitive work and really have very little to say. That's not the case at all. Anyone and everyone on our team, which is project-based, everybody works on a particular project at a time. Um, they may be working on multiple jobs at the same time, but there's usually a project team that really have this virtual board where they throw ideas of where are the issues and let's let's try and work through this together, whether it's an anomaly in the numbers, whether it's a, con, a contractual language that seems unusual that we need to really focus on, but it really requires a team effort. And again, it, it was harder at the beginning, but we moved from being together in a room to now virtually having um, a whiteboard essentially on Zoom. You can actually use that and really work through the issues together. And um, the associates, who came in, those two that I mentioned, brought in a lot of ideas, brought in their passion, brought in uh, issues that they've identified during the review. And uh, again, um, it worked really well because we were able to replicate that sitting in a room, physically in a studio had to be, because of COVID, had to move into a virtual room and it worked really well. Great, perfect. Um, before we transition to the, the Ask Me Anything, um, I just have two more questions. First, I want to ask the panelists as we, because when we do these sessions also, I want to make sure that everyone that's in attendance, that they have actual tangible resources that they can take away from the conversation. So if you guys have forums, job boards, clubs, initiatives, support, I mean, anything and everything that you can think of in this space um, that the students and talent can plug into, if you, I would ask the panelists to drop it in the chat. So that way, I mean, maybe it's a great article that you read, maybe it's a, a job board or a posting or any kind of listing or resources that you feel would be beneficial for um, our attendees today. If you could just drop that in the chat, that would be most appreciated. Um, and I would just um, really recommend for the attendees to save the chat at the end. So you have these links. I know a lot of people forget, we're really excited, we're in the moment. Um, save the chat at the end so you can have these resources. And I just wanna let, make sure our panelists are dropping that in the chat throughout the duration of the conversation. Um, my last question, also want to open the floor for questions. So if you have questions, DM me directly, Shari Holly, DM me directly, because after this next question, we're going to jump into the AMA. So please DM me directly with your questions. Please take advantage of this opportunity to ask Elon, Alicia, and Jerome anything that no question is stupid. This is for you. We want to make sure that you have the tools and the resources and the answers to assist you in your pursuits. So make sure you take advantage of the ask me anything. I'm going to open the floor for that right now. Um, my last question to you, um, the panelists, would be um, when we start to think about uh, careers and business affairs or law or accounting, et cetera, um, what are the real life challenges? Because we can talk about the perks and the, the work cultures and everything, but what are the real life challenges to working in this job? So we understand that um, every job has its challenges, its pros and cons, but I just want you to talk a little bit about that. Like when you think about your own experience, what are some of the real challenges that you would face as a, a lawyer in business fairs or as a CPA or forensics? Uh, I mean, it, it's the same thing as, as how you succeed. It's dealing with people. Like sometimes you have bad people that, or people that you don't like, or, you know, it, it, hard people or difficult people or people that you just don't vibe with uh, on the other side of a deal. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and so, you know, you have to work with anybody that shows up or is in, in their position. So, you know, working with, with, with folks is, is always a, a challenge, uh, if you could say that. Um, in this, sometimes, sometimes I get crazy clients too. So I will, I will drop that one. Uh, since I work a little bit more talent side, uh, I'll throw that one in there. But so, you know, sometimes the artisticness just takes people in different directions. And so, you know, like working with talent to, to curb their expectations of, you know, how much this project typically pays or, or how reasonable your terms are, or, you know, all of that. So, you know what I mean? Like some of this stuff, you know, cause I turn into the the blame for everything that's going wrong in every part of this and so 
dealing with angry people, you know, because, you know, I, like I said, I work music, film, TV. So music wise, there's somebody that's in a bad contract that, you know what I'm saying, that they signed before I got involved. Right. And now they're like, why you can't get me out of this? I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm not a miracle worker here. So, so dealing with people, uh, when they're angry is always a, a challenge in this business and, and managing expectations is, is a bigger challenge uh, there still. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd say those are the hard things, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes dealing with, um, and especially in music, there, there's a lot of, a lot more, I'll, I'll say shadiness that goes on. Um, so, you know, always having to threaten to bring in Elon you know what I mean? To check everybody's <laughs> books to make sure that we're getting paid what we're getting paid or we're supposed to be getting paid. You know, it's like, it's stuff like that that, that makes this job tough too. So uh, that's my two cents on it. Yeah, I totally agree with all of that. Definitely the human part has its pros and cons. Just to add to that, because again, I totally agree. It's definitely the human part. It's whenever you, you have people who you're all working on a team, but like here I am handling, you know, the contract and law and business affairs. This person's handling the props. They're trying to handle the in, uh, the in, the in, the in, the in, my gosh, the in, that person doesn't know exactly what I do. Just like, I don't know exactly what they, they do and they will tell me hurry up. And I'm like, I cannot fly through this like a hundred, um, um, pick, this, 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 this hundred page, um, um, contract anytime. So, and so having to deal with people who want you to hurry up and do this because the project is going, uh, um, so, 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 um, um, so fast, but then they don't understand if I speed through this and don't do a good job, we could be at risk is also totally a huge aspect of, um, um, a huge, um, aspect. And then also just to kind of go on the pros and cons of working with a company that is big or small or old or, 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 or new, if you're doing a deal with like a huge, like, you know, a huge talent or a huge company and you don't have a ton of, 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 of bridge, they won't budge. So here you are, like, here's my contract, here's the deal. And they're like, no, no. And you have to just kind of like accept it. And that's just so annoying as someone who's trying to cut a good deal that's good for both uh, uh, um, parties, but there's no deal because you're small and they're huge. So that's also a small part of it, but that just comes with, you know, the type of company that, 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 that you end up choosing to be a part of. By the way, I'd love the way Jerome kind of plugged me in there at the end. Uh, I'm, as you can see, I'm, uh, I'm quite threatening, uh, but going into, going into uh, the, the question at hand, by the way, before I get into the question, I just wanted to indicate that uh, our firm's website has a media clips uh, page with ha which has ton, tons of uh, podcasts, video casts, and white papers and uh, uh, blogs that we've been writing. And all of you, feel free to reach out to me directly and I can uh, provide you with more, more information. But we've got so much uh, information uh, on our website that it is uh, somewhat um, exceptional. So I, I would love for all of you, if you have a chance, to take a look at that. Uh, with with respect to the question at hand, I think that as I was listening to my two other uh, panelists, I, it reminded me um, uh, while I was going to, uh, to Cal State Northridge, I was also working for, for the family business, which is just literally a couple of blocks away. And it was a dry cleaner. So now you think to yourself, oh, that's not a big deal. But I had to, uh, I was in the front uh, working with, uh, with customers and, and I was going back and reflecting on the hundreds and hundreds of personalities that I was dealing with from happy customers to unhappy customers to difficult clients. And um, we even had a situation where one of the customers held a sign outside the store uh, trying to keep it, people away because we did something that wasn't satisfactory. I mean, it's like, I remember all these different experiences, but anyway, what's interesting is it all comes down to communications that I think Jerome in particular brought up uh, and how I go back to my experience dealing with hundreds of people while I was in school um, and figuring out a way to solve the issue, whatever that issue was, including paying $20 to the lady that literally was outside the store with a sign and saying, hopefully that will be satisfactory and she walked away. Um, but it really it is negotiation skills that we develop over time uh, that really are the challenge uh, in being able to figuring out the right way to solve communication issues. So I'm working with 
lawyers. Uh, I'm working with studios. I'm working with agencies. I work on behalf of the talent that may be, as Jerome says, could be in some cases not easy to work with. Uh, and so I have to work through all of this. I have to triangulate and work my way through how do I get my job done on behalf of Jerome to the benefit of his client or, and by the way, or on behalf of Alicia, on behalf of her company, but working my way to negotiate with the studio, having access to the information right now when we can go into the studio because of uh, health reasons. So it is negotiating and it is communication. So that's really the challenge. Thank you. Okay, so let's get to the fun part. I see some questions coming in. Thank you so much, panelists, for the discussion portion. Um, and this is kind of popcorn style. I'm just going to ask the questions from the attendees and whoever wants to answer. If your heart so desires, please feel free to do so. Um, our first question Do any of the panelists deal with screenwriters who want to sell their scripts? If not, what department deals with that? I mean, I can speak to what happens with Pretty Bird. I am in house, so I'm not handling talent directly in that type of way. But like, if there is a talent that wants to be thought of at a Pretty Bird and they do have a contact that's already at the company that they have a prior, um, a, 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 um, um, a prior established contact, you can ask to send it in, but you'd have to like sign, you know, an NDA and all this stuff to even see if we would have one of our um, PAs or our, uh, assistant step in to read the, 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 the script but I don't know personally about like who like tries to buy scripts you know like there's like like there's already a huge process on just to get a person to go in and read it yeah I could, I could just add oh sorry Jerome you want to go first oh this will take a second I I, I um although I, I may not directly be involved. It's interesting because I actually went through the process as uh, someone who actually put together a treatment. So I had a treatment, not a, not a whole script. And I had to work my way to find that out, the, the answer to that question. And there's typically an individual within a given studio, of, and it was actually an animation idea, um, where I actually had to sign, as Alicia just mentioned, it's um, a piece of paper. Uh, but ultimately, uh, it was it was I submitted it to an individual that's responsible for that. And unfortunately, none of them picked it up, uh, but it was, it was an interesting process to learn. Um, and, uh, but it's interesting, there is a legal element to that, right, Jerome and Alicia, that, that we actually, um, they have to uh, recognize that I've submitted it, uh, partly because there's always a worry that ultimately somebody might perceive another piece uh, a treatment might look like the one I've submitted, and then ultimately you can you can uh, hopefully prevent litigation. So anyway, that's that's all I wanted to share. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. Like I work, I work with folks that are trying to submit stuff, um, screenwriters, and such. Uh, and so I, I don't, I don't shop projects though specifically. I, I feel like that's where this is going. Um, I, I've done some stuff before, and it's just it's kind of not my bag. I, I like to refer that out to agents because um, that's, I mean, that's pretty much their job is to talk you into specific projects uh, with folks that, that are supposed to buy those projects. Um, but yeah, there is a, but from what everybody said is right, there's, there's a legal aspect of it first, because some time ago, somebody, people were sending in, you know, unsolicited scripts to studios, and then the studios got sued because, you know, their story about uh, uh, African dude coming to America and trying to meet his wife looked very similar to your treatment that you sent in that you know may not have gotten opened or whatever but now there's a, a big lawsuit about it and so nobody wants that so everyone now they don't stay accept unsolicited usually they try to make uh make you have representation first um so i do get a lot of calls like that where you know i, I want to submit my stuff but they told me i can't just submit and i need representation um I, again i'd say the best bet is to go through an agency to figure out, you know, because they'll evaluate your, your work and decide if they want to work with you. And then it, it gets to be a, a more personal relationship if you can do, do it that way. Um, you don't just need a lawyer to just send it in. I mean, I, I, I don't know. That's my two cents on it. But. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do on the business side. Do you have any suggestions on how I could possibly figure that out? Um, 
I, so I interned in college and in law school at a ton of places. The range was like so broad where even um, to this day, if I speak to someone who, who wants to hear about the things I've done, they're like, how do you have this like broad range? And the way I chose where I wanted to intern or who even I asked to get coffee was what I had, like what I wanted to know more about. You have to be very, very um, curious about the process or the project or the, 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 the person. Take that step to get, you know, more clear on what they do and then just try and pursue it in a small way. And just as in, uh, just as an example, um, in college, I worked at, uh, I worked at DC comics, not just because as a kid, I was like a fan of it. I was like, how do you make a comic book? You know, how do you perpetuate a brand that like present day, like it's, it's common to see that the CEO of X company is like, run by the person who started it while well, for a comic book that the people who made like the uh, supermans and the bat and the batmans are, are, are dead and old so how do you like perpetuate a true brand you know so like so like i'm not trying to go into a a a type of business that makes a comic book but i was interested enough about that process that i applied to have a job there and now i have contacts there who are, are, are who who are great and now i have an idea of branding that is different and then also as far as even having a coffee, like I really would highly encourage uh, people on this um, on this talk to really try and, and pay attention to the trades because in the Hollywood Reporter and the the the, the, the right, it, it, it tees, yes, on the average day they're posting about like, oh, this actor and this actor just signed on to, to this project or, you know, this happened in the, the courts. But at times they will talk about like, oh, an agent has changed to this company or this person just got um, bumped up to the head of this group or this talent just has this huge deal. And like, if you can look into who, um, into the players who are a part of those aspects that really do tie into the, uh, bit, bit to, to the, um, to the business aspect, then you can try to get a coffee with someone at the company, a coffee with a person who, who was at the table of that, that deal. And, and then ask them about like, about how they got that, that job. And that could clear up the idea of what you, want to actually do if that's clear sorry no oh, thank you um this next question is for elon does everyone who works at the firm need a law degree or are there other opportunities to be a part of the firm uh, that's a really good question i i think that um we have made uh, some changes uh, over the years uh but i would say that um you could be successful in growing within the firm with either a CPA license, uh, which you can obtain by taking an exam, which is a statewide exam, by the way, and I think you require to get some experience. So getting a CPA license is a traditional way of uh, rising up within the firm, but a new way, uh, which I think is an interesting one uh, that the firm adopted in recent years, is obtaining a certified product examiner designation uh, which is uh, just another path. It's not a license, but rather it's a designation. So um, if you look at um, where, where we see most of our team members get uh, their designation, it's not a law degree, but rather a certified product examiner designation that is well, is well received and accepted. Because ultimately, as you grow within the firm, you can become an expert on litigation matters and designations do matter. So. It's, uh, I have uh, a CPA license, I'm also a certified product examiner, and I have a couple of other designations that uh, really go a long way from, uh, you know, from showing that I, I, I can be an expert in a particular case. We do have one, we have, do have one member of our team that is, uh, is an attorney, but it's not a requirement. Again, being a CPA firm, there's other ways for you uh, to, to obtain designations or licenses. You don't have to get that degree. Thank you. Um, the next question is, are inter entertainment law internships or business affairs internships a thing? Because I haven't seen any. Uh, yeah, uh, they are. Um, I know personally, I do deal with interns uh, every now and then. Um, so yes, from an entertainment law standpoint, I'm almost positive that I've worked deal wise with someone who's in business affairs who had an internship that may have not been specifically business affairs. So I'm gonna give you a yes on both, but I'll let our, our business affairs rep uh, confirm that one. 
Yeah, there are totally like they're out there. But when I say you have to try to find them, I mean, you have to like claw through dirt to try and find them. There are like one or two per company. And I remember I was dead set on getting one at HBO a couple um, of e- of years ago I stalked HR I like had a contact there I was like here I am and they were like oh actually it's canceled now and I was like crushed so it is very hard to go and find it but once you find it you almost have to like apply to it and then find another way into the come but 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 become bunny so that you can stay in touch and get and get like a bit of FaceTime but but also if it doesn't work out and happen it's just done like example I worked at BET as an intern for the BET uh, Awards in 2016. And it was like an internship where they were like, oh, it's supposed to be for two months, but this time it's for, you know, a couple of weeks. So like, it's up, you know, so like, so like it's happening in June, but also it could be happening for half of that. And I was like, how do I make this be, you know, a true type of experience? I can, I can apply for it and meet meet, um, people at. So I like applied to it. I got it. I made sure I got coffee with everyone in the, the, whole group. And while I was there, I was trying to reach out to two two people on the other floors of BET just to go and meet them. So they're hard to find. And even if you find them, you have to kind of make them your own. But I highly encourage people to just search online on all of the types of job boards, like on LinkedIn, on Indeed, Um, just really like try and search. And this is just like a bit of advice when you're applying to an internship, if you don't apply to it like the week of, or honestly the day of, it's dead because it's so competitive that they're not going to look through hundreds of people. They're going to try and look at the first like 20 and choose uh, um, from there. So definitely if you're able to set an alert for type, for certain types of job boards to be, to get the email to go, to go, to go and apply. Because I also worked at Fox in college. I remember during during the job in interview, the HR person said I was the first person um, who, uh, who, um, who applied. And I remember I was out to eat with like a couple of friends. I got pinged that the job had been posted and I sat down and I just straight up applied to it. So you have to really kind of be on it because if you're trying to get those types of um, opportunities that are highly competitive, to touch it you have to really like be 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 on it the instant that it's like posted and i'll just piggyback off of that too i think i think this is another one of my shari mantras that i always say but you'll be surprised how many people um think this is a reactive industry this is a hyper proactive industry okay you cannot wait for opportunities to come to you that is not a thing entertainment okay waiting i mean rarely it does happen but i just want you guys to i mean i think alicia's point was great you really have to go out there and do your due diligence you have to read the trades you have to make sure that you're educated and top of your game you have to become an expert at your craft if you're serious enough about it and i think a lot of young talent are um was waiting for things to come to them, but that's just not how it works, especially in this industry. You really have to go out there and get it and and do your due diligence. So I just wanted to emphasize that point. Thank you so much, Alicia. Um, I have a couple more questions before um, we wrap. Um, Our next question is asking, how do you begin to pivot to new career paths and industries in this space with no prior knowledge or context? Okay, I'll I'll, I'll jump this one. So I did, uh, so like I said, I started off in software, right? I was marketing for a software company. Then I went to law school. Then after law school, I worked in civil litigation, right? So I don't know if these words mean things to people, but litigation is the other side of, of what I do now. It's the complete opposite, right? It's it's after we had a deal and then Elon got involved and then we didn't get paid what we we're supposed to get paid. Now we're going to court. So I used to just go to court on people's behalf for like two years, right? And that was just it. And it wasn't in entertainment. It had nothing to do with uh, anybody singing or dancing or, or making people laugh, like it was none of that. So after that, I decided to switch and I wanted to go straight deal side. So I completely switched with, I don't know, no to little context or, or experience uh, in the industry, right? The answer is you just got to do it. All of these things that we've talked about, about meeting people, getting coffees and lunches, applying for internships, being curious about projects, getting experience working on projects, like you just have to go do that, right? And so however you can do that is the answer to this question, right? And so 
knowing other people, knowing people that can, you know, that like you or that can talk your name into a, a circle that you didn't have before, like that stuff is huge. So that's why it benefits people to go and have the lunches and, and just talk to as many people, you know, sit on Zoom panels and ask a question and, you know, get people's attention to see if you can work your way in to a relationship where someone can say, you know what, maybe I don't have something for you, but I know somebody was just actually looking for, you know, a production assistant, uh, an intern for business affairs, uh, you know what I'm saying, somebody to, to bring on as an associate at a forensic firm. Like that, that's entirely on you. And so transitioning is just one of those things. And so before you do it, I would encourage you to learn how to win at the, whatever the next thing that you're trying to do is, right? Because, you know, litigation is, is different than, than transactional stuff. And entertainment is different than, you know, insurance defense. So learning how to win at the game that you're then going to try to play, that's important. So learn that first and then try to do it. Can I, can I add really quickly, uh, uh, just from the other side, um, I, I would say that as I reflect back, I mean, I've been doing, I've been working now for almost 27 years, but I, I've moved around uh, through this uh, big bucket of what's called accounting uh, and, and very similar to you, Jerome. I went from, you know, starting and doing financial audits and taxes across all kinds of industries, then got into insurance and reinsurance, and then became uh, an internal auditor and then became a consultant. And finally, uh, with, with luck and hard work, I found myself here at this firm. So I think that, um, I think we have to recognize that to some degree there's luck involved um, because you meet the right person at the right time <laughs> who connects you with the right company and uh, there is an opportunity there. So I think that you have to maintain an open mind and flexibility in this, in this economy, in this market. Um, but be proactive because you never know uh, and, and be curious because you never know what you'll end up doing. I have a good friend, uh, which I, you know, in terms of uh, opportunities of what you can do, this goes back a couple of questions, but who just by coincidence ended up becoming a production accountant and now barely is in, in uh, up until COVID, but up until COVID, he was literally traveling around the world uh, with his wife, who was his assistant and doing production accounting constantly from country country and would come home a year later and he loves it because he gets to do his job on, on set but also gets to, to see the world and so there's all kinds of fun things you can stumble on and then before you know it you love it then you want to stay with it amazing well that's it for our questions and our discussion um i love this conversation i learned so much this is not even my area so i'm just really happy that um, you guys carved out time and energy out of your busy schedules to speak to us today. It was incredibly educational and a lot of fun and a lot of gems. I'm going to remind our attendees to save the chat. Again, there was some very helpful information that you can reference later. I also want to encourage you to make sure that you follow and stay up to date with the California State University Entertainment Alliance because it is for you, okay? So make sure you follow them, um, you reach out to them, use them as a viable resource. Also, Pipelines Pro, download Pipelines Mobile in your app stores, Google Google and iOS. It's a free profile for you to be able to connect directly to tech, entertainment, and creative industries. Again, Elon, thank you. Alicia, thank you so much. Jerome, thank you so much. This will be recorded, um, so you'll be able to watch this later. And thank you so much again. Again, we do this every other week. I think our next one is March 30, uh, 31st, and it's post-production. So if you're interested in post-production, that'll be a very interesting panel for you guys on March 31st, mark your calendars. And we hope to see you there. And thank you so much. Have a great week, okay? Good luck with everything. Bye. Thank you.